Hello everybody, the old captain here and our good friend from Poland via Sacramento, California, O'Shea Jackson, uh, out in Poland becoming a doctor. Uh, he sent in a request, it's very short and sweet. Uh, O'Shea asks, what is, good credit, uh, what is good credit or bad credit? And that was it, that's all he wanted, so let's delve into the world of credit and credit scores. All right, <clears throat> there is, uh, there are three credit bureaus or entities that measure and track your propensity, ability, and track record, your historical track record of paying back the money that you borrowed from other people. Did you give people their money back? Did you pay back their time that they had to sacrifice in the form of labor to raise the money to give to you? They gave you their time. Are you going to pay them back? Are you going to be a thief and a dick and have enslaved them for that entire time to have them work for you? So that's what these three bureaus are. There's Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. All right, so those are the three credit bureaus. <clears throat> and they all more or less have the same scores. The, they all range from either 350 to 850 or 300 to 800. But let's just say the very low 300, the very highest 850, all right? So that's the range, three, uh, 300 to 850. And the average, which goes up and down over time, depending on, you know, after the financial crisis, credit scores are a little bit lower and recover. Uh, ever so roughly, depending on which measure you want to use, your average credit score is around 695. All right? So we could just say 700, but half the people have a credit score above 700, 695. Half have it below, and it's kind of a, it tails to the left if you remember your bell distribution curve. It kind of goes linearly up and then just boom, drops off to the very, very, <clears throat> very few people that have credit scores in the 800s, let's just say. But most people have pretty darn good credit when you think about it. If the average score is about 700 and goes from 300 to 850, that's not bad at all. That's, that's um, uh, a pretty darn well. Now, what constitutes a good score? In general, I mean, logic would say, well, I'd like to be on the better half of things. So you'd like a credit score of 695 or above. But uh, having worked in banking, um, it really depends. What we had set as a bottom limit, it depends on um, what type of loan you're going for. But your average commercial bank uh, would like to see a credit score of at least 600. Six, we don't want to see fives. We don't want to see anything below a six. Okay? If you go below a six, now your, your interest rates are going to go up. Right? And it's directly tied. A guy who's got a credit score of 850 is going to get the lowest interest rate, uh, lower than a guy with 600. So 600 isn't even good. That's, the, that's like the bare minimum that you want to maintain. So the lower your credit score, the higher the interest rate. But then it goes really high up exponentially, I'd say so, once you start uh, dipping below 600. <clears throat> and some entities won't even lend to you. All right? Banks won't lend to you, at least the good ones won't. Uh, then you start getting into the, the cash checking places, you get credit cards that charge you 25% or 33% uh, because you're just a bad credit risk. Because you, you, if you're going below 600, that means at minimum you've been late with some payments of returning other people's time and money to them. Or you just said, screw it. I'm going to keep your time and money for myself because I'm a parasitic scumbag, right? And that's what you are. Let's just start. So, in general, the higher the credit score, the better. But this is where we need to introduce what exactly is a credit score because there's this nefarious underside <clears throat> of the credit scoring world. Your credit score does not measure how financially stable or healthy you are. It correlates with it, but that's not exactly what it measures. Remember, Banks, credit card companies, financial companies, they're interested in making as much money off of you as possible. And what I like to akin the credit score, uh, credit score more towards is how much of a dupe and a sucker are you? All right? You're a criminal on one end. <clears throat> you're a thief and a parasite on the lower end. But if you got a credit score uh, above, you know, like in the 800s or the high 700s, not to say it's bad, not to say it, but there's a good percentage of you that are dupes. And the reason why is a credit score does not measure your financial stability. It measures how much debt can you handle and reliably pay back. Now, what is debt? Well, debt is other people's time in the form of money they lent you. Right? But debt is also slavery. I don't know if you watch Dave Ramsey or maybe you tuned into my show or my blog or read, uh, what was the book? I had a book, uh, Poor Rich's Retirement. Student loans, car loans, your mortgages, if you look at your personal budget, it is debt that is holding you uh, uh, captive. You are a slave to your debt. 
Because everybody out there wants to go buy the new stuff. They don't want to work up the cash for it. You guys, all, especially you boys out there. I know a, dispro percentage, a disproportionate percentage of you that listen to O'Shea are boys. All right. <clears throat> we'll go all laugh at the girls and all. Oh, they'll go buy all this crazy clothes and all this crazy. And then you idiots will go out there and buy a boat you don't need, a car you can't afford, and then you lease it. And then, oh, man, the car payment's more than my rent. All right. So if you want to be free, you want to be a true man. You answer to no one, including your spouse, including your boss. Hopefully you're self-employed. You hopefully have a very supportive wife or girlfriend. And you sure as hell don't owe anybody any money because that, that is the last one. You can get self-employed, but man, the mortgage, you got to live somewhere. Though. Ultimately, you got to live somewhere. It's the bank, man. The bank owns you. The bank owns your house. The bank owns your car. Even though your name's on the deed to it, you don't really own it. So if you... Think you have a good you have a good credit score, you think that's good, well you gotta rethink it because it measures how much debt can you take and how much of it can you reliably pay back. So the people with the highest amounts of debt or the highest credit scores are not well sometimes they are and sometimes they are but but a plurality, at least a good percentage of them, are not this house paid off, no credit card debt, no car loan. That's me. I don't have actually a very great credit score. I got a good one, I don't have a great one because I ain't got no debt. And remember the measure that the finance companies are interested in is how much money can they make off of you, how much debt can they give you, and how much will you be a sucker and pay it back. So the people with the highest credit scores, you sometimes, typically, not always, but typically find out, are people that have high debt loads and are every penny, every penny goes to pay off those debts regularly, and they're on time. <clears throat> so you could see this in like uh, the prissy little McMansion suburbs where wifey poo and husband poo uh, wifey Poo has some worthless liberal arts degree. The husband is an engineer slaving his ass off. And Wifey Poo needs everything. Wifey Poo needs a Range Rover. Why? Oh, we can't have a domestic car. We need a German car. I just can't go to the coffee store and the nail salon showing up in a Chevy. So you usually got two luxury vehicles with two car payments. You have a McMansion. The little snot-nosed kids got to go to football practice and hockey practice and chess club and flippy-flip uh, gymnastics and tap jazz and ballet. So these people, they, they, hubby brings in the money. Maybe wifey poo brings in some token amount of money. And that money is gone. <laughs> it's just gone. I mean, especially with direct payment, direct deposit, direct payment. The, the, the husband can bring home a $6,000 check. And five, I've seen it, guys. I've seen it in banking. That old beleaguered old husband comes up in his freaking Mercedes or whatever. Hey, wife wants another horse. Horses? Women with horses? Look the fuck out, man. You don't want nothing to do with women with horses. And just all the guy does is take a knife, cut his veins out, the blood goes out into the bank's accounts, which he had to pay us back because wifey poo needed a new horsey poo. I just love the horsies. I love the horsies. So all this fake crap, these toys, it, it, it enslaves you because you're borrowing the money uh, to make it look like you're keeping up with the Joneses because wifey poo needs a house in the suburbs, wifey poo needs their horsies, wifey poo needs a Range Rover, and let's not, let's not forget you dipshit guys, oh, I need a sports car to get impressed with the chicks. So banks and finance companies love that sucker. They love that guy. They love men that have wives with Range Rovers because we know you're going to be our bitch. We're going to own you. And yeah, you got a great credit score. Congratulations. You have a credit score of 815. Bravo. We own you. So again, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword. You obviously want better credit, but be careful why you have, like if you got really good credit, it's because you're a debt slave. That's not a good thing. Okay. You, not to break, you want to be like me. No debts. No debts. Chevy Silverado, 2003, paid cash. Hey, I ain't answering to no one. Fine, my credit score is a little bit low, but here's the thing. This is a little bit of philosophical reason. Uh, I don't need to borrow money. That's the goal, and that's the ultimate lesson I want to put. There are only two reasons, two reasons, you want to have a good or high credit score. And I'm going to claim that it's temporary. <clears throat> These are temporary reasons. One, employment. More and more employers are looking up your credit score. So you want to have a good credit score. So a lot of problems younger guys and gals face is um, when you come, you're fresh out of high school, you ain't got no credit score. You don't have a low credit score. You have no credit score. It comes up null and void. There's no, you, you don't even have a credit history. 
So <clears throat> there's ways to build up your credit. You get a credit card you really don't need. You pay for things with it, and then you pay it off regularly. You don't have too high of a balance, and you could get up above the 650s. I don't think you can get to 700 that way. Maybe take out a loan. You really, you know, okay, fine. A car loan. You borrow 3,000 bucks. Did you have the cash? Yeah, you pay it off a little bit early. You establish some track record. You get a high, uh, high uh, credit score. So then when you apply, we're going to run a background check on you. Oh, look. Uh, no, no delinquents, no defaults, pays on time, low credit balances, 690, good kid, let's hire Bob. Uh, rental property is another thing. You want to get an apartment, kind of helps to have a, a, a good credit score there as well. The only second reason <clears throat> that you want to have a good credit score, and I said this is temporary and fleeting, is when you want to qualify for a mortgage to buy a house. Now, this may not, you may not ever need a house. You may not. You may just be the single guy or gal forever in your life. You, unless you have kids, you're going to look at buying rental property. It really, it's hard to rationalize buying a house. I still recommend young men buy a house, just a small little bachelor pad that maybe you can rent out so you never have to face homelessness, so you can pay it off as quickly as possible. But you're going to want a good credit score when you qualify for a mortgage, all right? because that's going to bring your interest rates down. Also credit cards, but... I'm going to assume you're all mature adults and you ain't using your credit card for living expenses, like for long-term financing. You're just using it for temporary expenses and, y'all pay, and you pay it off regularly. So we're just going to assume you're in cappy land and you don't have $14,000 in a credit card balance. There is no balance. You pay it off every month. So <clears throat> when you qualify for a mortgage, keep in, in mind, you're basically essentially replacing rent with a mortgage payment. And the price that you pay monthly is directly tied not only to the balance that you're going to borrow, but your interest rate. And you want that interest rate as low as possible. So if you're thinking about buying a house, it might behoove you to go and say, all right, let's say I'm like Cappy. I ain't got no, I ain't got no debt, so I have, very, I have no credit or I have very marginal credit score. You want to boost that up. You can go online and search how to boost my credit score. There's little tricks and trades. Borrow money you don't need. Pay it back with the money that you have. So you boost it up. Then you apply for a mortgage and that very, if you could get it above 700, preferably above 750, now you're looking at a pretty good, you're going to get the optimal interest rate that you possibly can, right? So uh, that's, and then with that lower interest rate, you lower, assuming you have a 30 year mortgage, you lower your mortgage payment over the course of years by tens of thousands of dollars. And that's the only real reason, no little cappy land, that I could think that you need to borrow money. Because after you pay off your mortgage, and assuming you're frugal, assuming you're a minimalist, you just don't buy toys, you don't spend more than you make, you pay cash for your cars, you don't need to borrow money anymore. And once you get to that point, your credit score is kind of moot. It doesn't matter. I don't worry about my credit score because I'm never going to have to apply for a loan again. I also have my house paid off, so I never have to apply for a rental place again. And I'm self-employed, so I'm never going to have to apply to some HR lady asking me what's my favorite color and why again. My credit score is pretty much irrelevant at this point. And that's the goal that you want to get to, financially speaking, in your life in relation to credit scores. You, you want to only borrow money that is absolutely necessary and goes into an investment that either saves your rent uh, and increases your... Um, earnings potential, a.k.a. student loans, investing in something wise like a STEM degree. But once you're done with it, neither a borrower nor a lender be. You don't want anything to do with debt. Debt is, debt is your slave master. Debt, is, debt makes you their bitch. You don't want anything to do with debt. Your life is easier, happier, much more relaxing, lower stress, less chance of cardiac arrest and stroke. You don't want to have anything to do with debt. So the goal here is to not to get to the point in your life that you don't need to worry about your credit score because you're never going to borrow money again, right? When you're younger, it, you're going to have to borrow money. You don't have to, but there's opportunities where it would behoove you to. It's in your best interest to a mortgage on a house that's a good deal. Maybe, you know, employment and, and uh, you know, get a credit card and all that. Uh, but after that, man, your goal should be like, what's your credit score? I don't know. I don't care. And it doesn't affect me. Okay? You're not, people are like, oh, I gotta get my credit score up. Those are the people run off to the pawn or the payday lenders because uh, they got a credit score of 550 and they use their credit card to roll over and they default and they file for bankruptcy. You want none of that. You want to get out of that. You want to float up here. You want to stay above that. 
All right? So that's it. That's, that's the credit scores, and that's what good credit and bad credit means. In general, guys, in general, make it a policy of spending less than you make, and your credit score is always going to be above 600, all right? And you'll qualify for jobs and rental. Ideally, you know, have a credit card. It's just more efficient. Hell, a lot of places you can't go buy anything without a credit card. I think most everybody does have a credit card. Pay off your balances regularly every month down to zero. All right. If you need to pull some tricks of the trade, like I got to build up my credit before you go and get yourself a mortgage. Okay, maybe get a car loan that you have the cash for and you can pay it off real quickly over the course of five or six months. Uh, but otherwise, man, your goal, your mission in life is to make it so that it doesn't matter what your credit score is because you ain't got no reason to have debt and you ain't got no debt and you ain't ever going to have debt again. All right, that's it. See you guys later. Check me out, assholeconsulting.com. We'll talk to you then. Toodles.